Okay, and so Mike from San Diego, California wanted to know what uh, Dual Link is. Yeah, Dual Link. Um, we first patented Dual Link in our DX6 technology. So, Dual Link is actually when you turn the transmitter on, the transmitter scans the 2.4 gigahertz um, band and finds an open signal and it acquires that signal. Then it scans a second time and finds a second open signal and it turns on on that signal. The receiver is looking for the GUID or globally unique identifier of each of those transmitted signals and when it finds the first one it locks on when it finds the second one it locks on so you essentially have two links you have two RF paths so lo and behold if for some reason which is extremely unlikely one of those RF paths are uh, they have a problem you have interference on one of those you have a secondary RF path that you can transfer through with no problem at all so that's what dual links about it's an absolute key function to making these systems work in aircraft and it's a patented technology that only spectrum has that sounds great thank, thank you. you all right so jeremy from fort wayne indiana asks are there any special guidelines for mounting those receivers yeah the ar7000 has two receivers an external receiver and an internal receiver and the most critical aspect of mounting these is to keep the two antennas, when I say two antennas, this is a dipole antenna, so it's considered one antenna, and this is a secondary antenna, these are the wires, they need to stay at least two inches apart, okay? And um, also, it's a good idea, although it's not critical, that both of these antennas be perpendicular to each other, meaning that you know one's facing one direction and the other one's facing 90 degrees to each other. Gotcha. Typically in an airplane, the main receiver mounts in the normal place on the, uh, on the radio tray, and you just use foam or even double-sided foamy squishy tape and then a piece of servo tape on the side of the fuselage or one of the formers that's a pretty typical method of mounting this in a helicopter you do the same thing you use foam tape goes on the servo um, tray and then the remote receiver needs to be mounted such that the antenna is at least two inches away preferably perpendicular to the internal antenna servo tape it to the side or if necessary you can make a little plastic mount where it hangs off the front so it's actually very simple to mount it probably well it is a lot simpler than running a 39 inch antenna down a tube certainly i could see the ease in that instead of trying to run it down yep a tedious little tube down a fuselage most or definitely on a helicopter yep sounds good okay justin from lexington kentucky is asking when using long servo leads or y harnesses should amplifiers or chokes or filters be used you know with 2.4 gigahertz there's absolutely no reason to use chokes turtle coils uh, any kind of a filtering device to filter out RF noise from anything, speed controllers, uh, servos, anything like that. Um, those types of devices create RF noise that's below 300 megahertz. And of course, since uh, 2.4 gigahertz is actually 2,400 megahertz, it totally can't even see those types of interferences. So, you know, I would really highly recommend not using those types of things. Um, they don't really hurt anything, but they don't do anything for you when using 2.4 gigahertz. And by adding additional things to your system, you know, you have additional connectors, additional wires, it could be a failure point. You know, keep it as simple as you can generally. In fact, there's some JR uh, amplified Y harnesses that actually don't work with 2.4 gigahertz just because of the way it manipulates the signal. So 2.4 gigahertz, absolutely no need, and would really recommend not using those type of filters.